guys reach some sort of finality with NASCAR? I mean, at some point there was a raid on your house, right? Was right. this all part of do you? Do you lump this all in together with that, or is was this a separate deal? It was um, separate, obviously. But when you get the discovery of everything and, and you find the first, you know, five inches of paperwork, it's all NASCAR stuff, you know. That they, that they sent them. What do you mean? You know, well, you know, for example, I don't know where you want to start on all this. That's I don't know. Well, let's start here. Other, let's start here. A whole other. Let, let, let's start here real quick. And I don't know how long this goes. I'm, right. I'm just saying, start here. There was a raid on your house. Right. What What was the raid for and what came of it? It was a month before the appeals court, you know, because we, okay. we, we appealed it. We went back and appealed NASCAR's decision and um, felt real confident that we were going to win, you know, that we were going to win the appeal. Okay. And then that would be another thing that would be, you know, to try to sum all this up and put an end to it or whatever. And uh, so a month before, we're um, getting ready to go to Scrapyard. I'm doing my copper deal I was telling you about. And – all of a sudden, a guy came through my shop, you know, that, that wasn't supposed to be there on my property that I didn't want there, you know. And uh, he was a local guy that came in and, you know, always trying to sell something. or He just you know. stopped in. Well, so I, so well no, no, this is about – he stopped in about he, – he, he would come through every once in a while. Right. He was just trying to sell things. Yeah, weed eaters and speakers. All kinds of weed eaters. them guys, yeah. And he would just randomly come and go. Yep. And how did you meet him in the first place? By him doing that, just coming just in, showing, just up, showing up at my shop. You know, buy this? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And, and you know, trying to be friends and just trying to hang out. I, I'm sure you know a little bit yeah, what yeah. I'm talking about. That oh, you yeah. know, you get that and a random lot. Random people just show up, right? Yeah. Trying to trying to be a friend and, yeah. or fan or whatever. And um, so I found out what the guy was all about. So I said, "Look, man, you, you don't need to come back around here. Just you know, you're not welcome here. Just stay away, basically." And he had some stuff on your property. That you want him to get. Yeah, right? exactly. Boat or something. Yeah, a truck and a boat and this, that, and the other. And that's when I found out that the boat was probably stolen and everything else, you know. And um, so I said, look, you get your stuff and just go on and stay away from here, pretty much. Well, all of a sudden one day, I hadn't seen him for a month or so, two months. You know, we're getting ready to go to the scrapyard, and here he comes just pulling in with some dude in the truck and just walks right by me, right straight through my shop, you know. And I'm like, damn, that's kind of weird, you know, that I just t- he knows not to come in here. Now what am I going to do? You know, I got to do something to make it, you know, let him know I don't want him here, you know. And the other guy sitting in the truck, as I'm already thinking it's weird that he showed up and just walked right past me into my shop, you know. And uh, so about that time, we walk outside and the guy's sitting in the truck on his phone. I'm like, man, you need to get this guy out of here, you know. I don't want him here, da, da, da. Within seconds later, the guy gets out of his truck and, and all I hear is, here they come. You know, well, now I know what here they, here they come means. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. They coming. When, oh, yeah. When he said that, it was like uh, there was people coming out of the out of the bushes and out of the, you know, sliding in vans. And, <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. You know, really? Yeah, I had a long driveway. <laughs> and uh, Like Scarface. This is the second yeah. Scarface reference. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm thinking this. So, <laughs> so I'm seeing all this going on, and my shop at that point in time was right across the street from my house. Or not across the street, kind of like a little field, you know. But I could see it over there. And, um. And I had a cabin on top of the hill, another cabin place, whatever. Well, now, when they he when they, he said, "Here they come," it was uh, all blacked out, just AR-15s, just I mean, just coming from everywhere, you know, on the floor, you know, and all this stuff, you know, and everybody's, you know, there's a couple of my guys that was helping me, you know, we're all, you know, on the floor and everything else, you know, and and then uh, I get up and I look over my house, and it looked like um, I've never seen nothing like it's in a movie. I mean, there was like they were covering herself and you know, running side by side, and they had the big thing that opened, the, you know, that slammed the door open, and, and I'm sitting there watching all this, and everywhere I look, there's there's somebody blacked out with guns on, you know, and and blacked out cars and this, that, and the other. So probably like 90 people, 80 or 90 people. Yeah. Oh, just like that, you know. Did you sh- your pants? Uh, I about pissed in <laughs> for yeah. sure, but that, that's something else too, I'll tell you. But So all this going on, I'm looking over my house, and my wife, had, she's getting ready to go to work. She worked at, up in um, uh, Hickory. I'm thinking, wonder what she's thinking, you know. And so at the time, like a couple of seconds in, in my mind, I'm thinking, man, there's something big going on here. You know, that there's a killer loose, or, or somebody's broke out of prison, or something. They think he's here, or something. Something bad's going on, because nobody told me at this point in time. All we know, there was no sheriff, nothing on her on her suits, nothing. Just all black, camouflage and black, faces covered. I mean, you can imagine what that would look like, yeah. you know. Eventually, a guy come to me and said, after it all settled down a little bit, and they're still everywhere, like ants running around. And uh, shows me a search warrant. So we had a search warrant search of property looking for a stolen piece of scrap metal. And uh, like a plate. I'm, t- I'm telling you, there's a, like a 12 by 12 or 14 by 12 steel plate. Well, I had like probably 
$30,000 worth of copper on my rollback we're getting ready to go sell. And I'm thinking, steel plate. And I said, well, I got all kind of steel in my shed out there. Because you got steel scrap everywhere. You know how yeah. that goes on the race team. I said, y'all going to look for it if you want to. I don't, I'm not sure what you're talking about, but this is kind of big for a steel plate, you know, what they're doing here. So it just started getting worse from there. But that was a long day for me and, and something else I had to deal with after that. And that was a month before our, our appeal. So they, so. they there ended up being... 15, 25 counts of felony counts yep. from that raid. And there was some, they said they found drugs in a safe and and multiple pieces of equipment or something that right. was stolen and ended up being this really long list of <laughs> right. charges against you. Mm-hmm. You know, so like how, how does, how, that's not just bad luck. Right. Like how does that happen? Well, I still don't have no idea what some of the charges were. I had 28 felonies. After it was all over. I went to jail five times after that. About every month I was going to jail for that raid, that one particular raid. Well, actually, they come back a week later and did it again. Raided you again? Raided me again. You know, then I had to turn myself in. You know, then, you know, a couple months go by, well, I got to turn myself in again. Turn then, yourself in, you go into the jailhouse. Right, being indicted. Yeah, going to the jailhouse. Did and you like, spend a night? Did you stay? No. Did you have any time in jail? I sat there for a little bit, but I, I got to get out. You know, I was out pretty quick yeah. as I went in, but still had to go, you know. And uh, they indicted me for this for four counts here, indicted me for five counts here, and this is all separate times I was going. What's their evidence? Well, they when it also was all said and done, I bought a auction speaker system that you can like an announcer in a mic or whatever to do auctions. I did auctions from that boy there that I was telling you about, and uh, it was supposedly stolen. So I got possession of stolen goods basically, and. Uh, after all the 28 felonies went away, you know, this, that, and the other. But, I mean, one four accounts were like uh, 10 years apiece. I'm sitting in front of the judge, and he said, he said um, this is a minimum of, of 10 years apiece on this, and four of them. That's uh, 40 years, you know? Yeah. I'm thinking, man, and, and it was a larceny of a trailer backslashed aircraft. What is that? I have no idea. Still to this day, I have no idea. What air? <laughs> what trailer air- aircraft? Yes, backslashed aircraft, you know? What about the drugs? That was only, that was only four of them. What, what about the drug charges? Well, the drug charges were like this. I'm sitting there watching all this going on in my house, and you know, they're raiding it, looking at everything, pouring all the cereal out of the, you know, out of the boxes, and and just tearing my house, you know, just apart, yeah. you know, basically. And um, I had a safe in my in one room. I had a bunch of guns. I collected guns forever, and this, that, and other. So they wanted me to open my safe up. Nowhere on the on the search warrant said we're looking for you know we want to get in your safe or search your safe or anything else. They're looking for a stolen piece of scrap metal. And stolen goods or something like this. Or stolen piece of plate or whatever it was. We go back to my safe, open it up, thinking, you know, I'm, I haven't done anything wrong. I'm, again, okay, what's this for? A piece of, you know, sheet metal or plate, that, but you're pouring my cereal out of boxes in here looking through all my books, you know. We walk back in there, open the safe up. They say, okay, you, now you need to go. Go go back on the front porch with your wife, who basically they, when they was raiding my house over there, they grabbed her and threw her down. She just got out of the shower. Got her in handcuffs, you know, face planted to the floor for no reason whatsoever. You know, she's not going to shoot them or hurt anybody. They're going to kill my dog. He was barking, so if you, if you don't shut your dog up, we're going to kill your kill your dog. Okay. All this is going on, just one, you know, one thing after yeah. another. So anyway, they open the safe up, send me back outside. I go outside, and her, she, she and I are sitting on the porch, and I'm just looking around like this. And just seeing, everywhere I look, there's somebody taking pictures or something, you know, just big stuff going on. Probably 15 minutes later, they come out, and uh, no, it's probably 45 minutes later, they come out, and uh, one of the detectives did, and he said, I need to see you for a second, you know, so I walked over to the side, and he had his hand like this, and you see like a, you know, like plastic on the other end of it, just barely a piece of plastic sticking out of his hand. He said, you know what I got here in my hand? I said, no. He said, uh, we found meth in your safe. I said, you didn't find meth in my safe, and, I, and of course, when you're sitting there at the time, you're like, you know there's no meth in your safe. You know, so I'm going to say, well, you didn't find it in my safe because ain't, there ain't no meth here, you know. The other is, he said, yeah, we found this. And all I could see was just barely sent something sticking out. And uh, he said, but we don't want to take you to jail, Jeremy. We, we want to make this right for you, whatever, you know. He said, um, we need you to call, you know, one of these people on this list and get them over here and we'll want you to do a buy on them or whatever they do. What does that mean? Right. That means, you know, for me to call whoever's on this list, if I know them, they come over and sell me drugs and they arrest them. Okay, so they Pretty wanted much. you to be, and right. be an informant. Right. So, and while the, so they the, show this, you a list of names. Show me a list of names. I, I read the names. I was like, I didn't recognize nobody on the list. I said, but if you only call them, I will. You know, I mean, if you only call them, but I'm telling you right now, I don't know any of them, and I don't know what's. They're probably gonna laugh at me. It's you know, laugh wild. at you. Oh yeah. So, he said, well, 
go sit down. He said, and we'll get back with a few minutes. And he said, think about uh, where you can buy drugs at and who you can buy them from. And, if you know, basically do this buy deal. So I go out front. I'm sitting there like this. And I'm thinking, what in the world do you, you know, what, what's going on here? I'm thinking, too, that I ain't got nothing. There ain't no drugs. I don't know what you're talking about. They want me to do a buy and this, that, and the other. And I had no idea, you know, about any of this stuff. You know what I mean? And just, just spun out pretty much. And um, so at that point, I'm starting to get a little bit mad. You know, thinking, what what do you want? You know, what happened to this, the piece of the scrap metal y'all came here to look for? You're in my house, tearing my house apart. He comes back to me and he says, um, did you think of anybody? And at the time, I was kind of pissed off, and I said, I didn't. Th- I couldn't think of nobody. You know, I, I honestly couldn't think of where I could go have somebody come over there and sell me drugs while this is going in, in progress, you know. And he said, I said, I don't know what, you know, what you want or how, what you want me to do, whatever. And I said, oh, well, I just thought of somebody. He goes, and when I did that, he goes, oh, really, who, who is it? You know, he gets all excited. And I said, um, I probably shouldn't say this, but I should go ahead and say it. I said, because I was pissed, because I had a good feeling where all this was coming from. Mm. I said, um, probably the NASCAR garage area would be the only place I know mm-hmm. like this. Just being mad and just being pissed off at NASCAR and this, that, and the other. And probably should have never said that. You know, and when I said that, the other guy said, is he not going to work with us? <laughs> he said, I don't guess he is. And I'm still thinking – what are you going to do? Because I, I know you didn't find that in my safe, whatever whatever you got in your hand. And then that's when he said, well, lock him up. So when I said that, five seconds later, boom, my hands are on my, you know, my back, and I'm going to jail, you know. Yeah. So you're saying, I, I mean, this is pretty obvious, but I'm just going to state for the record here. You're saying whatever he held in his hand was not meth. No, and it didn't come from my safe, whatever was in and his it hand. Did, and there certainly wasn't anything in your safe. No. You're saying that. And they got in your safe how? I let them in my safe. You let them in the safe. Yeah, they, you know, they wanted in my safe. I was like, okay, now you walk in there, I had a, a gun room and I had a bunch of guns in it. And it was, you know, and, and something that was in my safe was I had a bunch of coins and all the stuff that I'd put in little plastic you know, wrappers that you put coins in. You know, if I found a silver dollar or whatever, you know, I had all that stuff in there. So I had baggies in there. And it was clearly you could see what they were for, you know. And, um, but there was no meth in there, no drugs in there, you know. I didn't even have to open the safe up if I didn't want to, you know. And I did anyway. Well, then I so anyway, they sent me to jail after that. It was just like I mean I keep going all day on all you know all the details yeah. why but whatever. But so I, that's the first time I went to jail. Basically, the guy while he's filling the papers out, they put me in jail or whatever. We're down there, and he goes, another guy come out and he said, what it weigh? And he goes, well, basically the weight of a baggie, one point something grams, you know. And you know, so they wrote down one point something grams and whatever it was was. It, but the guys, you know, I heard him say basically the weight of the baggie. You know, so I'm assuming that, well, it was a baggie that was one of the baggies I had in my safe, you know, yeah. not realizing whatever. But uh, so anyway, the judge let me out. I didn't get to, I had to go to jail and all so, that stuff. So, so. Okay. So, uh, how many <laughs> counts were there? 28? Something like that? Tw- yeah. 28. Of the, the 28, you're saying that there was, there, there was complete innocence in all 28 of those counts? No, there was like uh, two counts of um, possession of stolen goods that, that I – Admit it and told them I had, you know. You had possession of stolen goods, but you're saying you bought them. Yeah, I bought you them. You bought them, but they were stolen. Right. Just like a pawn shop or anybody would do, you know. I'm sure somebody around here has bought something that's stolen. Somebody oh, yeah. like, you not don't, know, you know, don't you know, know where the yeah. stuff, stuff right. from the pawn shop, usually you just assume it is stolen, right. actually, right? Right. So I know that for I know that for um for months and months and months that you wouldn't accept a plea deal that had any felon charge on it. And did you eventually have to do that? Or because I know you wanted to you're obviously trying to keep that off your personal record, right? Right. right. So I, I'm finding that kind of funny because um, you get raided, all that is right. happening, right? right. You, you, your world's exploding all around you, right? right? You're just like, oh, my God, what's happening? How did I get here? <laughs> right, right, right. How do you decide to keep turning away the plea deals that they keep sending you? Right. And Like, I, I ain't accepting that. Right. Tell them no <laughs> felony charges. Tell them no right. felony charges. I'll plead to anything that ain't a felony. And you just went on and on. Yeah, they went on for two and a half years. Why How? Why are you not, like, just trying to <laughs> get this <laughs> off your back? Right. Well, because, I, for one, I didn't want to be a felony. I didn't want to go to jail, you know? I didn't, I didn't. But if you pled guilty to the felony charge, I think you would have still not done any jail time. Might no, have. no, this was, yeah. oh, yeah, this was, this they wanted, was, uh, yeah, this was uh, my so first time. So how do you get to decide that you're going to be the one to tell them what you're going to accept. Right. I just was like this. I was like, 
for one, it, it didn't happen all twenty eight. Didn't happen all at one time. Like like uh, like okay. say okay. say a, a month or two after that, they'd indict me again because I didn't accept one right here. You know. Yeah. So now I'm now I'm indicted for five more. Okay. Then, you know, another month and a half goes by and five more. You know, then three more and t- different counties too. You know, different counties were coming aboard. So, you know, that made it hard for me to fight all this. Okay. Well, then at the end of that month, I was telling you about was my uh, hearing for our for the appeal for the appeal and the NASCAR drug test exactly and so meanwhile when we started getting our discovery you know you get discovery for everything they're accusing you for whatever basically well there was all kind of stuff on top of it that was just all nascar stuff you know well why why would that be a part of my case now this had nothing to do with nascar so why is nascar you know basically all their stuff information coming in on this you know so then we go to appeals court and of course the first you know, 30 minutes, they stand up and the, their attorneys are telling, you know, there's eight, whatever, six judges up there, whatever it is, that Mr. Mayfield uh, just got uh, arrested for methamphetamines and gun charges and, and just one right after another, you know, and, and how are you going to win that, yeah. you know? And even though they shouldn't have based it off that, it had nothing to do with it, it's totally separate, but, you know, the judges are listening and going, yeah, how are we going to rule on that, you know? So basically we lost our appeal. And then it was over after that, as far as NASCAR did. Hey, if you like that conversation, you ought to listen to the entire podcast because it's all really good. The Dale Jr. Download is available on all major podcast platforms.